Hi folks, I'm with Alex at Navigate. Today we are unpacking marks, Esther marks in the rum world. Um, we'll be connecting with Daniele Biondi, the rum legend from La Maison and Velia. And we'll be tasting one of the iconic marks from Hamden, so check it out. Okay, so there's a, a lot of interest in high ester rums around the world, um, especially those from the Trelawney region, Long Pond and Hamden. Uh, big ester levels reported in these rums, which yield an amazing bouquet of flavors. They're kind of one of the signatures of that region of Jamaica. Um, these uh, estates code their specific recipes and specific releases of rums to represent ester ranges so that buyers of any type sort of understand what, what new make or what white rum they're getting in terms of its ester level. And those codes are known as, as marks, correct? Absolutely, I think you've summed it quite, quite, uh, quite well, uh, Brendan. I think important, we're gonna talk about the Hamden marks today, as opposed to some other marks which uh, different parts of the Jamaican region often have uh, associated, whether it's as a general mark for the region or, yeah. or di distillery specific. Um, but we're going to cut over to Daniele, who's, who, who really, uh, you know, possibly one of the bigger authorities on this. And he's going to give us a, a, an absolute crash course. Over to you, Daniele. Uh, so what are these marks? Marks are um, the specific formulas that in the old times, I'm talking about uh, mid 18th century, uh, Jamaica was uh, the most important uh, area of the rum production at that time um, and uh, uh, rum was an unaged spirit uh, sold in bulk to the to, to Europe to uh, to England basically um, so uh, the, this trade of um, uh, bulk um, was very established and, and, and very important and the the way um, to understand what these barrels, you know, were containing uh, at that time, uh, was to um, um, sign, you know, those barrels with uh, with stencils, you know, uh, with painting, um, with some acronyms, uh, and these acronyms were a sort of code in the in the rum trade at that time, um, and uh, these were identifying actually the kind of uh, liquid, the kind of formula, because you have to think that all these rums were white, so unaged. Uh, so what make the difference between all these, uh, these spirits from all the distilleries? Uh, so it was the mix of um, the raw materials and also the timings and the, 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 the different ways and the different techniques, all techniques of fermentation. So in this way, distilleries were able to produce different formulas. Uh, we can uh, remind that, for example, Hampton uh, in the past and also now um, is producing different formulas, eight different formulas, so different marks. Um, and other distilleries were doing the same. Worthy Park is still producing four different marks. Long Pond, nine different marks, and, and, and so on. Uh, because this tradition is still, uh, uh, is still existing now. I mean, the identity of uh, uh, the major uh, Jamaican distilleries is still to uh, produce and sell the unaged spirit in, in bulk for the blenders all over, in Europe and all over the world. So there you have it from uh, Daniele. Marks are codes that denote specific uh, ester ranges from, from these rum estates. Um, before we taste this uh, ooh, <laughs> big ester rum, uh, one of the special bottlings from Habitation Villiers, uh, we're going to cut back to Daniele and he's going to really unpack the Hamden marks in, in more specific detail for us. Hello, Brandon. Hello, hello, Navigate team. Um, the topic of today is to go deeper in uh, um, all those marks of uh, Hampton Estate in, in Jamaica. Uh, and Hampton historically um, produced eight different formulas, 
uh, that actually are uh, eight different marks. So uh, I'm sure you heard about the, those acronyms like uh, LROK or uh, HLCF, so quite uh, complex, like codes, you know, quite complex uh, acronyms to understand what it is. Uh, because, you know, uh, in the past, uh, the way to understand what was containing in the, in the barrel was, uh, was only, you know, with, through some stencils. And uh, um, this was a sort of code to make uh, the distillery and also the trader and also the final blender in, uh, in Europe to understand what the barrel wo wo was containing. So, uh, for example, Hampton produced eight from, and, and there is a sort of scale of these eight formulas uh, in terms of quantity of esters. So the esters are um, a way to quantify the level of aromas. So uh, light Hampden um, can be considered a, a rum easier to drink with a lighter uh, body. And then you can go to uh, heavier Hampden in terms of quantity of these esters, actually, to arrive to those uh, formulas that are so, I mean, so high in the level of flavors and the level of esters that uh, historically were produced only to be blended and, and not, not really to be drunk neat, okay? You're going to try one of the, one of the higher marks here and see if we, uh, if we enjoy it and if we think it's for, for consumption or not, or if it's for a science experiment of sort. Mm. Let's, let's have, a, have a little nose there. I mean, the nose just takes the initial hemmed in H here that we know, or the great house that we know, right up to, to a different role. Mm. I mean, the... Uh, Almost more rot fruit now. Yeah. Pineapple coming out uh, even stronger. Some it's rubbers and acetone. Rubbers and acetone, which we often get with the sort of single casks and the. Doesn't uh, sound pleasant, uh, but it smells, uh, you know, it, it is pleasant, you know, that's just integrated. Absolutely. Beautifully. I think this also would run really well on from a, from a great house or another single cask with a lower ester mark. If you jump straight in there, um, we'll have to see on the pallet. How we handle yeah i mean marks 13 to 1400 grams per hectolitre esters that's very high i think if i'm not mistaken that's the second highest ester mark hamden mm -hmm. releases and up at that level you really need to be into bold flavors I you want to so, be yeah. smacked around not everyone is is up for that but uh the 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 whiskey writer michael jackson not the, the crotch grabbing pop artist the the beer and whiskey writer once said the timid miss out on much and i think Something like this, as bold as it is, like you know, it really can Absolutely. offer a lot if you're into that thing. Oh, I've come off my first sip, and uh, you know, I, re I really enjoy this, and and, and and I'd like to drink it over and over again. Oh, um, oh, that's good. There's, uh, I guess, is an initial sort of um, assumption that possibly the high ester markings might be the best if you're scaling it up like that. Um, but it would be no different to the scale on the whiskey index, uh, you know going into the whiskey realm with PPM on peat. Yeah. We have some really high PPM peated whiskies, Octomores that are up at two or 300 PPM. Um, yet sometimes a little 50 PPM is, is, is already really peated. And perceives uh, just as peated. Absolutely. Yeah. Now it's fun trying those high PPMs, uh, those high peated whiskies, um, but that doesn't always mean it's necessarily the best peated whiskey you're going to have. It's up to you to decide really, but I love trying the high PPM whiskeys and I like trying the low PPM whiskeys that somehow find the balance. And I think that's what's fun about these uh, ester markings. I think it's really special if you can try one of these uh, big marks. Yeah. Uh, personal favorite probably for me is at this stage, I think the Rock is uh, striking the right chords for me on balance somewhere in the sort of middle. Rock sort of three to 400 in that area. That's it. Yeah. Um, so that's a good level for me. I, I mean, I'm happy at five, six, and I'm happy at 1,200 or more. I, I love trying them all, but as, yeah. a, as something you can drink regularly and, and all the time, I really find that three to 400 uh, L Rock really approachable. Um, so I would encourage anyone to, to try all these ester markings, as many mm. as they can get their hands on, and uh, just enjoy it and, and make your own, own decisions. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, this is this is stunning. I think it's the first time I've had this particular. Sixty-eight point five percent. Yeah, and it just it doesn't taste like it needs water. You don't you don't feel like you need to water it down. Although you could experiment with that on this on this bottling. Absolutely. Anyway, I think uh, we've we've dived quite 
deeply into esters there. Um, I hope we've helped you understand uh, high ester run production and we've had a bit of a focus on the Trelawney region, the real sort of heartbeat of high ester run. Um, until the next time, keep your spirits up. <laughs> <laughs>